it's warm and calm, so head out to your favorite pier, dock, or fishing hole. And if you want to beat the heat, now's a good time to go bass fishing at night. The tarpon are near shore and the tunas are just in your reach. We got you covered here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. We're getting you hooked up here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report, so tune in right now as Captain Rick Murphy and myself, right now, Bree Gabrielle, bring you your captain's reports from around the state. It's 4th of July week, Rick, which means freedom fireworks, fish, and a few days on or near the water. And today, Rick, we're talking all about piers and docks and... And fishing off of them. Absolutely. You know, Bree, and the cool part is you don't necessarily have to have a boat to yeah. really enjoy the great fishing that Texas has. What I think about when I was a little kid is how many bass that I caught just sitting on a dock on a little night crawler. Mm -hmm. I think That's our fun. guides are really going to have some good information for us tonight, so I think we ought to go ahead and get started. I think so too, but first we have to say hi to Dave at the CCA Workbench. Dave, what's going on over there today? Well, one of the fish that you catch on a dock is a crappie, so we're going to talk a little bit about catching catching him, you know, tonight, how to catch him in different ways and with jigs and Perfect. minners and all kinds minners, of stuff. Minners, get them minners. All right, Dave, well, if you're celebrating in the Upper Fresh region this week, set your sights on Lake Texoma and Louisville because that's where the fish are too. Johnny Geist is on the line, so listen up. Hello, Rick and Bree. How y'all doing? Good. How you doing, Johnny? Hey, great. Well, so this week we're going to be discussing fishing from docks and pairs. You know, a lot of anglers uh, in our area, they don't have a boat, and a lot of our fishing holes don't have a good shore access, so, so where else can you find a place to fish? Well, most most lakes and uh, public bodies of water, they have some type of uh, dock or pier, and of course, there are a lot of private docks on most all the lakes. I did a little Google search around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and there's just a multitude of public access on fishing piers and docks, all within the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And most all the state parks provide handicap accessible fishing piers and they got lighted docks at night as well. So here's a few tips and reminders when you do uh, try a fishing pier. You've got to be 17 and older in Texas. you got to have a license. Under, under that you don't. Uh, be sure to keep that area clean and trash and no bottles when you go to a public pier. Uh, keep your tackle and bait real simple. Uh, if you just take earthworms, they'll usually catch anything that swims. It's a good bait to catch brim and catfish. Try your minnows, they'll be the best for your crappie and bass. You can always use any kind of artificial lure. When you go on one of these docks, be respectful of other anglers and don't be afraid to ask what's biting. Usually the fishermen around you will help you get, get on the right bite. You'll be catching fish in no time. Short, uh, use small hooks, light tackle, they'll get the most bites. And one other thing, if you're in one, don't trespass on a private uh, dock without permission. Let's talk about a real good fishing hole over at Lake Louisville right now for large amount of bass. Lake Louisville Fishing Barge, they provide an air-conditioned and heated fishing area inside that dock. It's got pier access on the outside. It's open 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. It, it was established way back in uh, 1957. It's located off the Farnham Market 407 up in Lake Louisville, just minutes from the Louisville Lake Park. There you can catch bass, crappie, catfish, brim, and carp all year long. They have all kinds of baits for sale there and tackle for rent. The barge also has restaurants, snacks, and beverages, or you can even bring your own cooter if you like. Uh, daily admission is good for 12 hours, and adults can fish for 12 hours for $10, and kids under 10 or 5. I've got a picture here to just show you how good dock fish is on Lake Louisville. Uh, John Babbage, he actually caught a 13.63 pound bass back in, in 2006, was a lake record. And there's still a lot of good bass and crappie being caught under the Louisville fishing barge. Man, that's a nice... Yeah, go ahead, Johnny. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to move on over to talk about the stripers at Texoma. Uh, got a great report from Captain Bill and Chris Carey of Striper Express. Uh, they're reporting that striper fishing has been off the charts, just holding up great. Summertime topwater fishing, then slab actions producing a lot of stripers from what they call a two-pound box fish all the way up to 16-pound trophies. The lake level's a couple feet over normal still. The surface temperature is around 80. It's good topwater fishing. They board and park their charters every morning at 6 o'clock. Captain says they run about 10 miles of deeper water. They look for topwater fish busting chad on the surface. And then they throw a 6-inch pencil popper, and they're having some exciting action. 
about an hour of that, the fish go down and they stay grouped up, but you have to find them on your depth finders and you can catch them on a lot of slabs. About a one and a half to three ounce slab, drop it below the school of strappers and race it to the top. And most of the time the fish will hit it on the way up. You got to reel it real fast and you don't even have to set the hook there. They're load up on it, catch them yourself. The slab, slab bite will last about 10 or 11 o'clock and then it's pretty much done for the day. And boy, did he send me a good picture to share with the viewers tonight. Here's a picture of Bill Carey's grandson, Chaden Carey. Ran out with his dad, Chris, for a little while of striper fishing. Caught this 15 half pound striper on a pencil popper. Thought that was a great one to share with you. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Great you picture, Johnny. Thank, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Upper Fresh Region hot spots. Lake Louisville, black bass are good on a Carolina rig with creature baits, flukes, and shaky head worms. Water slightly stained with water temps at 83 to 86, and then Lake, Lake Texoma, water is 1.3 feet high with the stained water. The stripers are good on top water, and then the slabs and live shad out deep. The temps are 80 to 85 feet. All right, Rick, Lake or Livingston, degrees. degrees, not feet. Yes. <laughs> Lake Livingston, Toledo Bend, and Sam, Ray Sam Rayburn in the Startron Middle Fresh Region is where you want to be with your stars and stripes this weekend. So listen up to Matt Locher for the details. Hey, Matt. Hey, Bree. Yeah, I'm going to get on this dock fishing deal and talk to you guys a little bit about some good opportunities you've got in the Middle Fresh Region. Um, basically, we've got lakes all over the Middle Fresh Region that are just littered with docks and piers. I mean, they come in all shapes and sizes from private docks to public fishing piers and state parks and, and big marinas and things. Um, but two that really stand out are, are Lake Livingston and Toledo Bend. They both have a lot of good dock fishing and a lot of access to it for state parks and things like that. Uh, especially Toledo Bend, you know, it's one of the best in our region for public access fishing piers. We have several state parks scattered throughout the lake from north to south that all offer, you know, public access to fishing piers. Most of them are lighted for fishing at night. And then there's a lot of marinas that are privately owned where you can rent a cabin and stay the night and fish during the day or night and uh, really have a good time catching fish off these piers. And you can find a list of those places at ToledoBendLakeCountry.com. You can go on that website and they've got a list of all those and where you can find them. But regardless of which lake you're on, uh, basically, all these lakes in the Middle Fresh region have pretty much the same species of fish hanging out in them. And, uh, you know, on the docks, especially this time of year, you can almost always find some crappie, some bluegill, and some catfish. You know, you can always catch some bass, some black bass, white bass, whatever also, but the crappie and bluegill and catfish are usually plentiful. And, you know, to seek out these species at night is always good. You know, the, those docks that are lighted are going to pull in the bait fish, which are going to pull in the predator fish. And so that's always a good deal to do is go out there at night and drop some bait. But you don't have to limit yourself to that. It works good during the daytime as well. During the daytime, it's exactly the opposite. The fish are going to come in for the shade, and they're going to hang out underneath those docks for the shade. So these docks are always holding some fish. Um, some good baits to use for the crappie are going to be live minnows. The bluegill are going to want live crickets. And then for the catfish, you know, you can use cut bait, chicken livers, night crawlers, whatever. They're not usually very picky. Just get something down there to the bottom. But one thing to really keep an eye out for when you're fishing these kind of docks is find a fish cleaning station. And anytime you've got a lot of people cleaning fish in an area, that's going to draw in those catfish. So throw out there where they're cleaning those fish at and you're probably going to be able to catch a lot of catfish day or night in those areas and it makes for a lot of fun you can catch some really big ones doing that now um aside from that i'm going to jump over to sam rayburn real quick and talk about some uh, black bass fishing aside from the heat these fish are still eating really good uh they're biting a lot in the grass i spent a day over there this week and we had a really good time catching those fish in the hydrilla and the pepper grass Early in the morning or anytime you have some clouds or wind, a swim bait's really the ticket. Uh, you know, just anything shad colored, about a four inch swim bait was, was really good for me over there. You know, just run it over the top of that grass at a slow pace and they'll come up and nail it. It's a lot of fun. And then other than that, uh, a little stick worm was good, just a, a Cinco type bait. You know, a uh, watermelon red is pretty much the only color you need. I like to throw it on an eighth ounce weight, a little Cajun lures baton, and uh, just throw that out there over the top of that grass and kind of let it glide down into the grass and just work it Texas style and 
you'll catch some good fish doing that. If that's not working for you, uh, if it calms down and gets real sunny, go to the big chance ribbon tail worm. Uh, red bug's a good color. Back off in that eight or ten foot of water on those creek channels and, and fish the edge of that grass, and you can catch them that way. And then lastly, uh, real quick, I want to catch on crappie over at Salida Bend. We're still catching those things pretty good right now. You know, the heat's got them slowed down just a little bit, but we're catching some big ones. Uh, the deep timber is where you want to look for them. 20 to 30 foot deep. They're getting out there a little deeper. The water's falling. That's pulling them out, and the heat's pushing them a little deeper. Fish about 10 to 15 foot deep for them with live minnows, or a little chartreuse and blue jig has been really good for me for getting reaction bites from those big slabs this week. Uh, just throw it out there on a 16 ounce head and kind of let it pendle them down over the top of them. And then I've got a, a photo for you guys there to finish up with. Um, we've got a photo there of myself with my wife and, and my in-laws out there catching some crappie this week. We had a good time catching some big slabs. All right, man, thank you so much, Matt. Great report from the StarTron Middle Fresh region. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots. Matt says that uh, bass on Sam Rayburn are chasing swim baits and stick worms in the grass. Crappie on Toledo Bend are biting minnows and jigs in the deeper timber. All right, Rick, stick around if you want your weekend <coughs> report for the Upper Coast region. But first, we're checking in with Dave at the CCA Workbench for some Academy Sports Rigs and Techniques. Dave, what we got over there? It's something that'll reach out and touch someone. Is what uh, that's what I like reach it. out there and get into the deep. Into the deep, <laughs> off the dock. Into the deep. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. The American Fishing Tackle Company. Any fish, any water. Since 1958. Guy Harvey, marine wildlife artist and conservationist. And CCA Texas, a leader in marine conservation. Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 offshore four strokes. For those that like their V6 lighter, faster, and stronger. Setting new standards for power, efficiency, speed, and lightweight. Built for the rigors of offshore boating. Packed with Yamaha's legendary reliability. And now Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 four strokes offer a choice between digital or mechanical controls to match your rigging preference. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Remember the glory days of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. Outside is a bully. There are bears screaming in fleet footed waters. Arrogant mountains. Goliaths. 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 And a hundred other excuses to stay inside. But there are ways to deal with bullies. CCA is the largest marine conservation group of its kind. With 70,000 members in Texas, CCA's mission is dedicated to conserve, promote, and enhance the present and future availability of our coastal resources for the benefit and enjoyment of the general public. So if you care about the health of our Texas coastal resources, join CCA today by going to their website, ccatexas.org, and help them make a difference. Use the promo code REDFISH to receive your free hat with your membership. CCA, the leader in marine conservation. Well, we're here at the CCA Workbench, yes, and rigs and techniques is something we certainly cover every week, mm -hmm. Dave. And we're talking about crappie fishing tonight. Right. So well, you know, do docks and you know decks and all that stuff. We we can talk. We can catch fish, uh, a crappie off a dock or in a boat. Doesn't matter. But you know, they're all around the docks, especially during the spring and the fall, is when they move up into the shallower waters. In the heat of the summer, and even in the cold of the winter, they'll go out into the deep water. Right. But in the spring and in the fall, they're definitely around those docks, and we can and within reach for those fellows to catch them. Now, 
there's several ways to catch them. You know, you can use artificial lures, and if you're going to use artificial stuff, the best probably lure of all time is that little marabou jig right there. It's a marabou crappie jig. It's usually going to be green, yellow, or white. You know, those are the colors that you want to use if you're going to be fishing with for a crappie. And that little thing, you can you can either toss it out and and retrieve it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, in one sixteenth or one thirty second ounce. Right. Or you could fish it under a cork. Just like you, you know, like a popping cork, you could fish a double tandem rig, which a lot of people will put two of the little Malibu jigs on. So this is going to be and hanging down. Correct, and it will hang down, and you can fish it under a cork, kind of like you would with a with with minnows, except for two of those. Now right. you can also use just a regular ball head jig with a plastic uh, a body on it. What's good about these is you can change the colors at your whim. You know, the, yeah, one color is better than the other. Then correct. you can switch it out, and you can put like you know put different colors on the on the fluke. sides if you want, yep. and and you can make put little beetle spin plastics or uh, little minnow styles or whatever. And then this one is is a horse head jig, and these are mainly used when the fish are deeper. It's again, it's a casting and retrieve type deal. It's got a lot of the horse head jigs have that little spinner blade on them, right. and, they, and they can be used for that too. You know, when when they're in that deep water at night in the 10, 15 foot range, that's when you're going to want to use those heavier jigs, and the and the marabou jigs are, are better when they're up in the shallow. Now you'll see a lot of times you'll go in and see uh, these big giant rods, and you're thinking, wow, that's a 10 foot rod. You know, why would you use such a long rod to catch a crappie? Well, what these do is these guys will have eight of these things sitting out on the front of their boat and they'll troll along with a trolling motor mm -hmm. and they'll have those at different different depths. The ones closer to the bow of the boat are usually the deepest ones and then they go out, you know, usually if they have eight, they have four on each side in the front and the ones to the, to the far outside are the shallower ones. And what they'll try to do is they'll troll along and until, until they get a bite and they'll stop and they'll just sit on that structure, whatever it is, and they'll just jig with a with either like this is I got this is a minnow rig, right. but they'll either have a, a minnow rig like this, a live minnows, or with the two marabou jigs, and just sit there, and you can just sit there with that rod, with those rods just vibrating, you know, with that hair, and you, and you'll get bites from those from so those crops. Dave, let me ask you, what's with the beads? Well, is supposedly there, is that attract. Supposedly that that's an attractor for attractor. for when they come floating down. But uh, I, it might even be a spacer as well. But I think that they they use them as an attractor as well. But it, you know, anytime you get over the the stumps and the and the deep brush, right now, like the the fellow was saying earlier, the fish are in the heat of the day. You're, what you're doing is you're looking on your on your sounder and you're trying to find those fish hanging over that deep structure, the deep timber and whatnot. And what you have to do is you have to get your baits in those fish or above them. You don't want to be below them. They're not going to go down for stuff. You know, they're want, they're going to be up on the top where you can get a hold of them. I mean, they're going to be up closer to where you want to be able to get that bait above, right above them, not down below them, in them or or right above them. And and you can use all kinds. They got if you're gonna if you're gonna fish with them, try to use an Aberdeen hook. An Aberdeen hook has a long shank on it. Those are there's some VMC Aberdeens. And what what an Aberdeen hook is, these fish, if you catch a smaller one and you want to release it, you can just go ahead, <laughs> you can go ahead and and use that long shank to get the to get the bait out. Right. And and those work really good, especially especially that size. That's a perfect size for a minnow and or uh, you, you can even put uh, a, like one of these little lake fork uh, plastic minnow jigs on, on, on a regular hook and mm -hmm. jig it under the bobber. You don't even have to use a minnow if you don't want to, to keep those minnows That's alive. That's a cute little thing, isn't it? Aren't they, those are really awesome. And, and I tell you what, a key, a key thing is when you're, is, is try to figure out your speed when you're, when you're slow trolling along. Right. You don't want your you don't want this thing to be blowing in the wind back at a 45 degree angle because you'll be able it'll, as you're going along you'll be able to hang up on stuff and you don't want it to be straight up and down because when you're straight up and down you have your your minnows and stuff even with this kind of little doodads to keep them out of the main line they can get tangled up right. you want about a 10 to 15 degree angle from the rod tip back to the water you don't want it to be blowing way right. back and you don't want it straight up and down but that 10 to 15 degree angle. That's the good angle that you want. It'll, that'll determine your speed. That's some good advice. Man, no man I like that. No so worries. It's kind of like dredge fishing, 
you know, when you're Blue Marlin fishing, <laughs> exactly. but smaller. Except, and you got tons of stuff out there, too. Right. It's, it's pretty neat. All right, Bree, we got to go to another region. Yes, we do. Captain Caleb, I know you're putting everyone on some fish this week, so let us in on some of your Upper Coast region secrets. That's it, that's it. Well, hey, you know, I'm talking about these piers and docks, the Upper Coast has a ton of public areas that have piers and docks that people can fish off of. Starting in the top of the Galveston Bay Complex in Trinity Bay, Fort Anilak Park has multiple piers to fish off of on the lagoon side and the Trinity River side. There's also a, uh, there's also a Chambers County Community Pier in Oak Island just north of Double Vile. You can also fish from the bank off the rocks around Buddy McBride Park at the base of Fred Hartman Bridge in Tabs Bay. And you can go to the Baytown Nature Center and fish off the many piers and stations that they have set up on the point of Crystal Bay and Burnett Bay. The pier at San uh, Sylvan Beach Park over there in Laporte is a popular area for people to fish off of as well. Moving to the more proper Galveston Bay, the 18th Street Pier in San Leon is a good spot this time of year as well. One of the most famous places for fishing in public areas is the Tech City Dyke. The Tech City Dyke is a levee that projects nearly five miles out of the mouth of Galveston Bay, and you can fish the entire length of it. The most popular part is the tip of the dike where the deepest water is, but at the base of the dike is Mosquito Island, a good reef that will hold trout and redfish during the summer months. And at the very mouth of Galveston Bay is Sea Wolf Park on the eastern part of Pelican Island. Sea Wolf is a good place to fish with the uh, amount of open water right there. And it's always, always, uh, always a good place to catch flounder whenever they start their run. Rollover Pass on Bolivar Peninsula is a great place to try to catch a star winning trout. And it's also a good place to always just go get some bites. And you better go enjoy it before they close it up. And on the surf side, you got the 61st Street Pier, and a little further down the seawall is the Galveston Fishing Pier at 89th Street. So there's a lot of options there. And then uh, going, you know, to the Redfish Report, you know, Sabine has been doing really good on the lower end of the lake on the Louisiana shoreline in front of Biles and Coves. They provide a lot of good amounts, you know, clamshell and oyster over there. That marsh on the Louisiana side is always vibrant and full of mullet, shrimps, and crab. And so, uh, you know, these Redfish will cruise that shoreline looking for bait all day. Just put your troll motor against the grass and throw a paddle tail soft plastic on an eight ounce jig head and you'll be good to go. The jetties have also been good for redfish too over there. And like we've talked about before, the best way to catch them on the jetties is throwing crankbaits parallel to the rocks. And there's a picture there of a you know nice redfish being released. And then um, going offshore, you know, buddy Carl from Salty Dolphin Charters over in Freeport said this week looks like the weather might finally give us a break in the wind. So for all you people wanting to get out there for the holiday weekend, the weather looks like it's finally going to cooperate. And like we talked about last week, there's a lot of options for people in big boats that want to go out deep. But there's also a lot of options for you guys that don't want to run 100 miles. The near shore bite is coming on strong with the improvement of the water. And warmer temperatures and a lot of bait will bring a lot of species closer in and easier to target. Sharks and bull reds are popular species to catch in our near shore waters. And while fishing for bull reds and sharks in the beachfront, it's not uncommon to hook into Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, jack crevel, and occasional ling. A good technique for catching sharks on the beachfront is to anchor up and chum and freeline whole cigar minnows on a six knot J hook with wire leader. For bull reds, a bottom rig with a three uh, to five ounce sinker on a six knot hook with cut mullet, ladyfish, or anything oily is good. And there have also been some tarpon reports coming in, so that'll develop soon. And then also, Carl said, that being that the, uh, the weather looks like it's going to give us a good window, running out to the floaters for tuna will finally be an option. The Boom Vang and Nansen, which are about 120 nautical miles out of Freeport, are always going to be consistent for tuna. And for guys with lower fuel range, there are closer options for a nice box of black tuna at the east and west are bases, which are about 75 nautical miles out of Freeport. Jigging and chunking are going to be the best tactics. And this time of year, you can expect black fin up to 20 pound range, and if you're lucky to hit some yellowfin, they can be up to 80 pounds right now. And there's a picture there of a nice uh, blackfin tuna haul from the floaters with salty dolphin charters. Nice job. All right, bud, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the CCA Upper Coast hotspots. Inshore, redfish have been good in Sabine. The lower end of the lake and the jetties are still holding good reds. The paddle tails with soft plastics in the lake and crankbaits on the rocks. And then offshore, uh, the near shore and beach fishing is, has really picked up. Bull reds and sharks are plentiful in 20 to 50 foot range, Bree. All right, Rick. Every week we talk about it, the CCA Texas Star Tournament has been blowing and going. Ten tagged redfish have already been caught from Corpus Christi to Sabine Lake. Four official winners are now just waiting to take home their new 
Ford F-150 and Haney boat package, or in the case of 12-year-old Sam Lack, a $25,000 scholarship and Haney boat package. Congratulations to these lucky anglers. There's still plenty of time to get registered, so go to ccatexas.org for more information. 12 Man, year old, way you to go, go Sam. dude. That's I like it. Awesome. Good for him. All right, the lower, fresh, and upper coast regions are next up on the Texas Insider Fishing Report, so stay tuned. And remember, for all things fishing in Texas, visit our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and view and tag us on Instagram. We'll be right back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Contender Boats, always in the game. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. CCA Star, fishing fun for giant prizes and scholarships. And Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. Master your most challenging offshore experience with confidence and ease with Yamaha Helmmaster. Precise, intuitive control on the open seas. Unrivaled ease for maneuvering and docking in port. And now Setpoint adds three new dimensions to boat control. Maintain boat position with fish point, or a position and heading with stay point, or a heading while you drift with drift point. Yamaha Helmmaster, now with Setpoint. Complete digital control for today's larger offshore boats. As close as you're gonna get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left, there's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. Well, welcome Jeff Barnes from the Coast Guard Auxiliary. And Jeff, you know, July, we just finished up with 4th of July, and July is a bad month for boating fatalities. So what can we do to become safer boaters? Well, uh, first of all, uh, when you're going on the, on the boat and you're having a good time on the sandbar, just be careful of how much you're drinking. Right. Uh, Making sure, make sure that uh, the person that's at the helm is not distracted. Uh, and make sure they have the experience at the helm as well uh, when they're going on the boat. Now, biggest thing is take a, an about boating safety course. Um, no matter how old you are, no matter how many years you've been on the water, maybe there's a few things you kind of forgot. Um, also, you want to take a vessel safety check, and those are free. You just go to um, cgox.org, and you can look up your, uh, your zip code, and we'll have an, an examiner either come to your home or your dock, or you can sometimes you can find us out, out, um, you know, around town. So let me ask you, Jeff, you know, equipment obviously is a, a huge part and a necessity. So where do we start? What, what are the necessities that you see that boaters fail to have? Well, first of all, you wanna make sure that your nav lights are always operational, because you never know, you may be out a little late and you gotta have those nav lights on just to make sure people can see you while you're out on the water. The other thing is making sure you have a type four um, PFD. And this is a, a ring, but you know, most people have the cushions the with the handles, cushion. the throwable. You gotta have that readily accessible, not, not as stowed away somewhere, you're gonna have it ready to go and throw out. Now we have two types of life jackets. So let's talk about the difference. Okay, this is the inflatables. Now you gotta have this on in order for it to count. So you just can't have it stowed away like this. You can have put away in your, in your console or something and ready to go. Uh, the other thing is you gotta make sure you have flares. Right. Make sure they're not expired. Um, these are very important. Also fire extinguishers are very important as well. Um, I talked about safety check. You wanna get one of these stickers. Right. That means that you're good to go for the year and make sure you get one every year. Oh, that's the hassle-free sticker. That's the hassle-free sticker. <laughs> What else? I noticed you got an EPIRB and a VHF. With cell phones, is VHF still part uh, of the game? VHF is a very big part of the game because sometimes you may be a little just outside of cell phone range, but you can get a hold of someone, even with a handheld, right. you can get a hold of someone that's, that is in VF, uh, VHF range or cell phone range, and they can relay uh, important emergency information. 
Um, I like to carry a, a first aid kit with me just in case. You never right. know. Make sure all your fingers and toes come back. Uh, and big thing is, you know, a lot of, a lot of boats have EPIRBs. This is a PL, called a PLB, which is like a personal EPIRB. I carry this with me all the time. And this is one of those really good safety uh, things you can have on your person all the time, just in case you just never know when something may go wrong. Yeah, all you gotta do is pop that baby and the Calvary's coming. Exactly. Jeff, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, busy schedule. But Bree, we still got to keep moving. Yes, we do. The Yeti Lower Fresh region has quite the lineup with Lake Somerville, Bastrop, Pflugerville, Travis, and Lake Falcon. And Matt Reed is here to guide you through them all. Hey, Matt. Hey, Bree. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, doing good. Doing good. Uh, just, just doing what I do. Just trying to catch a fish every now and then. Well, let's go catch some <laughs> fish then. <laughs> All right, let's start off talking about some pier and dock fishing in the lower region. Uh, there are a few very nice places in, in the lower region for you to, to fish off docks. Uh, Lake Somerville's Overlook Marina is a great place. Uh, you can catch multiple species there. Crappie, catfish, bluegill, and bass can all be had. Uh, it's really a, a, a common place to catch them really well because Somerville's a great fishery. Moving on down the road, Lake, Lake Bastrop South Shore Park also has a fishing pier. Catfish and bluegill are the number one target there at the moment. In La Little Lake Pflugerville is just a really neat small place. It has seven fishing piers located in it. Uh, catfish, bass, crappie, and bluegill uh, are very common to be caught there. You know, there's not that many many lakes in my region that have, you know, fishing piers and docks, but those are some really good places. Uh, in general, the pier fishermen should really keep an open mind and catch the species that are, are most available at the time. You know, a lot of times there's crappie available. Sometimes there's, there's usually always some catfish. Uh, bluegill are, are, are readily available. Live baits usually your best option. Uh, minnows for the the crappie and the you know and the bass uh, are probably your best bet for those. Um, night crawlers are great for the catfish and bluegill, and then the doe bait will do you best for the for the catfish on the bottom. Uh, and always have your artificials handy when you might have some bass around the brush that would be located around those dots. So that's kind of what I've got in the region for piers. Uh, always fun and you know where everybody can come out and you don't have to have a boat to get you a mess of fish. Good advice Matt. All right tell me about the largemouth bub. All right well, let's roll on down to Canyon Lake. Uh, it's producing fish up to six pounds right now. The shallow fish seem to be feeding on crawfish so flipping crawfish style soft plastics in the standing timber and willow trees has been a, and a good pattern for the shallow fish. The other pattern in Canyon is, is offshore it's in 15 to 30 foot of water. Uh, Carolina rig flukes and drop shots have been doing best out there. Green pumpkin or green pumpkin magic is, is have been the best colors. Uh, as most of the lakes in South Texas, the Canyon is falling pretty fast right now with the summer heat. Lake Travis is still fishing real well. Um, Brian Cotter is, is with Texas hogs, his trips have been catching 30 to 40 bass per half a day, uh, sometimes up to 50. Most of them are coming on top water, such as a head and one knocker spook. Um, after the sun comes out, you switch over to the Texas rigs, soft plastics, uh, either Cinco or a creature, creature bait or craw worms have been doing the best around, the, around some cover, around the trees up the river. Moving over, over to Lake Bastrop, the fishing is real strong early in the morning there. Need to get there early and there's some top water action, uh, but the best bite has been on shaky head with four inch zoom finesse or trick worms. Um, you can catch a whole lot of fish doing that. There's some areas you, you're literally catching them every cast. So they're catching 30 to 75 per day, but you gotta start early because after the sun gets up, that seems to be slowing down pretty quickly. On down to my headquarters at Falcon. Uh, Falcon is still fishing really good. You can catch them several ways down there right now. If you like to fish shallow, you can flip the shallow hardwoods with a dark color soft plastics. Uh, most of that's going to be on the upper end of the lake. Uh, my favorite bite is, is on the lower, from mid to the lower lake, on, on the offshore rock ledges and humps. Um, I catch them throwing a big crankbait and chartreuse pattern. 
like the Z-Boss 20. Uh, the moon glow color is probably my favorite. Uh, the other thing that I do is throw a three-quarter ounce football jig in, in sour pumpkin. Um, that's kind of green pumpkin with, with purple in it. Uh, that's a great way to catch the big ones also. The heat only bothers you down there. The fish down there love it. They live in the desert. They love the sunshine and hot. That makes them really happy. So, Matt, I got a question for you. You know, when I was a little boy, I used to fish with my uncle, and we fished, uh, you know, weekend bass tournaments. And one of the things I remember about going along the shorelines is we used what they called a day glow light. Basically, what that light did is it cast a shadow towards the shore so that you could see the depth perception and know how far to cast. When you guys fish mm -hmm. at nighttime to get out of the heat, are you guys still using lights like that? Uh, you know, Rick, I made a deal with them a long time ago. If they bite my bait in the daytime, I'd leave them alone at night. But yeah, there are there are lights like that. You know, a, a black light that does show your line um, helps you see what's going on. There still is that type of thing available. All right, tell me about this photo, Bub, and then we'll say goodbye. All right, that is uh, Britt and Britton Myers. That's the big old fish, the Falcon Lake special from down there. Love it when you get a father-son in the boat and get to watch them smile together. I love it too. All right, thank you. Have a good weekend, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the lower fresh hot spots. Pier fishing overlooking the marina on the lake Somerville is very good. A wide variety of fish are biting crappie, bluegill, catfish, and bass can be caught. When you were a little boy, huh? Yeah. Hmm. You know, eight <laughs> know. years old. I know. If you're fishing in the lower coast region this weekend, Captain Chad Kinney is taking you offshore and inshore, so you get to have your pick. Go for it, Chad. I know you're not wow. pregnant anymore. Hey, I can give you the. Tell you, we got some, we got some really good stuff going on here. Starting out with the uh, the trout fishing's been really good here at Fort Mansfield, and offshore snapper fishing, you know, federal waters continues to be great. All of the lower coast here from Port Rampus, South Padre, Port Mansfield. And we got some good reports of some tuna and some Dorado coming in also. So starting out with something a little different, which is really great. I grew up fishing around docks and piers and stuff like that all my life. And a lot of people do it. It's a it's an excellent way to enjoy the outdoors and people be, be real productive catching fish. So if you get a chance to do this, whether you know Port Manso, South Padre, Corpus, you can rent a place or there's public piers or anything else like that or docks like that to fish off. It's really productive more if you're into the fishing part of it for a light of piers at night. There'll be some good numbers of speckled trout here through the summer. Um, try a saltwater assassin, like a sea shad, glow in the dark. Those really work well. You can stick that up to the light there. It'll help it glow even more. And use a lighter jig head when you're using this, like a 16 pounds. It'll help it uh, sink a little bit slower and stuff like that to get a better, better bite to hit it in the fall. Also, you can freeline some live shrimp. And uh, popping corks also work well around if you're fishing off the docks here. If you're going to be fishing, if you've got some higher winds, kind of take a look at the stuff like that. If it's going to be higher winds, Try to get in a protected harbor there. Might be a little bit deeper and get more protected. It won't, the water won't get all churned up, stuff like that. If the wind's a little bit lower, stuff like that, you can get some private piers or public piers that'll extend out, you know, four or 500 feet onto the water. You're still gonna be three to five foot deep. It's still great fishing there at night. <clears throat> During the day, if you're fishing on that stuff, get some cut bait, some mullet, anything else you like, ballyhoo, and chunks it out there, some shrimp <clears throat> for redfish and some drum. Or you can freeline some live croaker during the day out there for some trout to pick up like that. One thing on the lights here, if you guys are doing that stuff and fishing at night, kind of be quiet when you're fishing. you got to catch one or two and then kind of back off and let them regroup again and kind of peck away at them. It's be a, be a lot more stealthy. I mean, you'd have more production. And i got a great picture here. This is from our location here at Laguna Madre Bates. we got a, a place here where people stand and had a climb on Dallas. Matt Rubel sent me this picture here from a Sunset Hill off the docks. Man, so I remember <laughs> that. That is so yeah, beautiful. It's, it's, it's good stuff, so even if you don't even catch a fish, you can't beat that. Yeah. No, it's you sure can. Stuff. It makes Jumping you want to go okay. fishing. All right, let's go fishing for some <laughs> trout. What do you got, Bub? Well, tell you what, trout fishing's picked up here, man, so it's been good. Uh, they're still hanging out that four to five foot of water on the breaks uh, around the weather station, uh, up north there, Wagner Barn, stuff like that. And that four to five foot, when they're going from grass to sand. Uh, early in the morning, the live croaker bite on our free lines are working really well still. And if the wind's not blowing too hard, which we're getting some really good days now coming up, stuff like that, you might want to go early and try some top waters like a Rapala skitter walk. Bone color I like starting with really early with it. You know, walk the dog and wait for that blow up or a follow up on a red or something like that. Uh, try the sand pockets also. We get some good weather along the King King Ranch shoreline. 
get up there, you really got to wade this area. It's a lot better. But if you get up there and wade it in that one and a half to two foot, three foot of water, don't be scared. You know, cast up towards the bank, maybe work your way out about 100 yards out and work through those areas, and you'll end up getting a potentially really good shot of some big trout and then some numbers in there also. Got a great picture of uh, Sandra Garza here. She's uh, next door to me at the Getaway Adventures Lodge here, and she's got a beautiful trout she caught there and released there morning. She got to, got to go fish. That's an Man, awesome And you've been photo. working on your pictures, bub. I'm yeah. impressed. All right, let's go offshore. Offshore has been great on the lower coast, guys. Uh, like I said, from Fort A, Fort Manso, South Padre, Federal Snapper season is great. Head up deeper. We got some good reports of tuna and wahoo, dorado coming in. I'll have a whole bunch more here next week for you guys. So the dorado has been pretty good, you know, decent, consistent from 200 to the 100 fathom curve. Try some cedar plugs, some feathers work good, seven and a half, eight knots. Um, you find anything floating in rip currents, haven't had any weed lines yet. If you've seen that stuff, go ahead and work at it. And then I got a picture here. If you see some flying fish, you can see a picture of a dorado here. It's this guy's first dorado. We saw some flying fish with the baits in and we had a double knockdown. And then moving over to some good stuff, got some black fin tuna and some yellow fin tuna being caught up deep. Try some rig valley too. You know, switch chains really good with a cedar plug trailer. Green machine on the center rigger works great. Um, Trollos seven and a half, eight, eight knots and stuff like that. And there's some bigger yellowfin out there deep past 100 fathom curve. I want to try waste stone, cold stuff like that. I had a good report of saltwater. Got a picture here of a yellowfin tuna, but saltwater out of South Padre Island brought in a 134 pound yellowfin the other day nice. when they were sail fishing. Boy, that's a nice fish. Okay, bud, thank you so much for the great pictures. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the lower coast region hotspots. He says, inshore, trout fishing is good out of Port Mansfield, and then offshore, snapper fishing continues to be excellent, and great reports from the lower coast on tunas and dorados coming in. Chad's killing it. He's doing great. He's doing I love great. it. Way to go, Chad. <laughs> Way to go. We've got your Middle Coast Region Report and Captain Next. And we're also seeing what new products Dave has for us at the CCA Workbench. Dave, what's new and exciting over here? I'm wearing my sunglasses cool. at night and with my West Coast style. That's yeah. what these are. These You're are West cool Coast cat. style. He's a cool cat. We'll be right back. <laughs> you don't get any cooler than that. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at rapala.com. Yeti, built for the wild. Building Conservation Trust, CCA's national habitat program. Startron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. When you've got an incredible opportunity in front of you, you want a Yamaha VMAX SHO behind you. Just ask 2017 Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Brandon Polinick. He'll tell you, if you're an aspiring angler with big dreams and a VMAX SHO, there's no limit to what you could achieve. Light, fast, fuel-efficient V6 performance and Yamaha reliability that lets you focus on your game. Nothing pushes you like a Yamaha VMAX SHO. We need that quarter that we can Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass! Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. Thanks for tuning in to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram to keep all their captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes as well as special segments right on our homepage. Just head to TexasInsiderFishingReport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. Today's power pole tip of the week is becoming more stealth with your poles. Now guys, think about this. We have three speeds on our power poles and the one thing that we need to understand is that we can manipulate those speeds. We can go fast, medium, or stealth mode. Now whenever I'm making a move from an oyster bar over to a point and I know I'm only going to pick up the poles a few inches at a time, I simply click it into the stealth mode so that I can keep the noise level down to a very, very quiet approach. Now you guys that love the bass fish and you're fishing fish that are on beds, that approach is the same thing. 
make sure that you go into the stealth mode so that you can sneak up on those beds, put your poles down, and the bass doesn't know you're there. Keep in mind that by simply manipulating the speeds through your multifunction switch or through the app using the key fob, this will make a great approach. And that's today's Power Pole Tip of the Week. Well, we're here at CCA Workbench. Yes, New sir. products, Dave. This yeah. is a great time of year. We got those power poles sure up. sure beat the crap out of my dropping my anchor over all oh, the time. Yeah. <laughs> those things are Did nice. Did you get yours now yet? I haven't got mine yet. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a micro pole I need. Anyway, these are the new Costa Del Mars. Uh, these are the West Coast tile I was talking about. These are called the Slack Tide, and these are really, really very light. They got the, the straight, uh, straight brow across the top. They got ventilation on the side with a pin hinge in there, 580p glass, really nice, as you can tell, looking through them right now, as I was impressed a second ago when I look out through all these lights in here, it really cuts, cuts the glare and looks really nice, as, as well as all the 580ps I, do. I, I mean, I look good. You this. do. Oh, you do. Oh, you do. Anyway, those are ventilated. <laughs> next, next come up, we got the Rincon. Oh, let's see how I look at yeah. these. Let's see how I those are named these. after the famed East California Point Man, break as well. I'm having just a good night, Dave. Again, again yeah. yeah, they got the curved temples. These have the spring hinges. <laughs> They're made for the guys with big heads. You know, that's a that's big head. That's not me. You yeah. saw how tight those were on the side. Yeah, and yeah these, these are look. better wow, because they, because wow, they have the wow, spring hinge. Wow. And those are made from a castor plant bio-based resin, which makes them really, really light and, and biodegradable too. So really good stuff there. And, you know, again, I'm always looking for a pair of glasses that'll fit my big head. Me too. <laughs> All right, now we got the sail fin from Soft Science. And, you know, again, these are great for any kind of fishing or boating that you're going to be doing. Uh, the upper mesh here dries really fast. It's got the five ringlets to make you sure you got a secure, stable base. You can get them really, really tight. These rings aren't uh, made out of something that's going to rust, uh, rust and, and, and deteriorate, and what about nor, the nor will the strings. Well, this is the, the, dry, the dry flow at the front. The water gets in there, it'll come out the sides, and, and if you're stepping in water, it won't go up the bottom. It's got the Trileon uh, uh, soft sole on the outside and on the inside for the insole, which is and it's hard to get out of there, but you can. You can wash those if you want to, uh, you know, get all the smell out. Plus they don't smell that much at all because of the, of the stuff that's on them. Non-slip sole, obviously. Yeah, so, the cool part is that there's a, a sole inside a sole. Correct. So we correct. got more sole and we know what to do Exactly, with. <laughs> I need some more. I'm on fire, bro. All right, we got Florida Fishing Products. This is the Osprey 1000 and the 2500. Mm -hmm. These are you have 10 shielded bearings. They're very, very, very smooth. Uh, lightweight carbon rotor on there. What's really good about them is how small they are. They have 22 pounds. They can hold 22 pounds of drag, wow. which is far more than probably the line and or the rod that you're going to be using and or your your arm. You know how many 22 pound curls are you going to do? 5.21 uh, ratio, 7.4 ounces for that little guy. The big one's only 9.4 ounces. Uh, very lightweight, durable, and sleek. They come with either a teardrop handle or you can get a big power handle on there. 3% of the money that they, they get profits go to conservation. FloridaFishingProducts.com, the Osprey. Tell me about the H2O bag. Okay, well, this is a, this is a cool, uh, cool bag. You can get it at Academy. Uh, it's called the X2, H2 Express Deluxe Tackle Bag. I'll mm -hmm. get this stuff out of the way for you. It holds five, uh, five storage utility boxes. It's got a line, little line spooler at one end, which is I really, like really cool. You can put your spool of line in there, run it out through that, and use it to, to spool oh, up. Yeah. You don't have to have another dude standing there, cool. which is great. It's got eight storage pockets on the outside. It's got that nice big uh, shoulder strap that lets right. out, so you can. I actually stole this thing from Academy the other day by accident. I put it on my shoulder and it was up underneath me. It looked like a little man purse. And I walked out of Academy, I had my dog, and I bought all the other stuff and I walked out of Academy and I had it under my, I had to go back in and say, hey dude, I've stole this thing. He, he, uh, he was very is, understanding, they didn't arrest me. So my question, is that a confession? No, I came back in and paid for it. He says, man, you're, I can't believe you came back in and paid for it. I said, man, I, I thought about it for about a half a second, but I'm not that kind of man. That's no, not no, me. No. That's no, not no. me. I don't steal stuff. So anyway, that's the, that's the last one, the H2O Express there. All right. Well, you did good over here, Dave. Well, thank you very much. So, Dave, I got a little quick question for you. Sure. What's your favorite part about doing the products here? Um, 
that I get to keep most of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's an honest answer. That's coming from yeah, a guy who's stealing keep a bag all. from Academy Bree. That's all. my favorite part about you doing the new products, is that I get to keep some of them. All right, the Middle Coast region has got some weekend specials for you, so Captain Bank, close us out with a bang. All right, the neat thing about the uh, Middle Coast is, is a public pier is available for those without a boat. Uh, the Surfside Jetty, though it's not considered a pier, it might as well be one since Brazoria County created like a smooth surface walkway across the granite. Man, those people bring uh, all kinds of wagons and everything. It, it's a pretty cool place. And some of the best catches of the year happen right now on the green tides for trout, red, jack, cabal, and uh, kingfish. The same holds true uh, at the mouth of the Colorado and Matagorda. That pier extends out to the jetty and gives anglers a long reach to the Gulf. There's lots of bull redfish out there and trout regularly. And uh, then some of the best pier fishing occurs at night in the Colorado River in Matagorda County uh, on the piers and in Caney Creek and Sargent. Those anglers, those, they take live bait and uh, glow plastics and they toss, uh, toss those things under lights and just wait for them to, to eat it. Uh, now we'll go to trout, man. The consensus is in Texas uh, we're happy that June's behind us. It, it probably was one of the toughest Junes I can remember uh, as a guide. It's been a grind to say the least, uh, but there's hope. And we've, we've got light winds this week, and, and there's the bays are already greening up, and we've got a chance for the, the surf to flatten up. So we're, we're kind of looking forward to that. It seems like it always does it around the 4th of July. Uh, West Matagorda Bay, uh, it's cooled off a bit for the lure guys. Uh, they're, they're catching half limits on super spooks and skitter walks. And then those guys toss the live croakers, they're, they're, they're getting their fish, but they're having to work harder to do it. Uh, around Palacios, boaters are anchor, anchoring around the barge and the sunken shrimp boats. And they've scored easy limits on shrimp uh, rigged under a four foot fork. And the reefs off Palacios Point and Hotel Point are holding good trout as well. The problem's been the wind. It takes 10 knots or less to comfortably fish it. And we've had anything but 10 knots or less. It's been 15 to 25, add them together, sometimes you get 40. Uh, East Matagorda Bay has been tough for drifters. Some days they eat fast assassins down south lure, some days they don't. But but tossing those live shrimp on our mid-coast popping court uh, have been good for half limits. The good news is, man, it's, it's greened up today and we've had some great catches the last two days. And then guy Trey Pry out of Sargent released multiple trout there in East Matagorda Bay, uh, six to eight pound range while wading the mud flats on the east ends. And then those mid-bay reefs, long reef, three beak and half moon and barefoot have produced uh, good trout on live bait. Uh, there's a lot of fish in the ICW right now. A lot of those reefs on the North Shoreline are holding them. We've got an incoming tide in the morning and, and they, we've really been taking advantage of it. Then those reefs in uh, Freeport, uh, they're holding good trout on live shrimp while anchoring. And they're walking the nearby rocks and tossing top waters. Uh, Early and late, catching fish there at the jetty. Port O'Connor, Lynn Smith said those waiters around Pascobar are getting easy limits. I'm going down there in the next couple of days to see what's going on, fishing between Pascobar and the jetty. Protect the shorelines like the Cedars and City Slickers are doing well. And then Rockport remains the same. Top water's early in waist deep water, soft plastic later in chest deep water. Croker guys are uh, getting trout on St. Joe Island. And trailer island and then there's a photo there of John King he caught that nice East Matagorda Bay trout while fishing with uh, Captain Michael Roth uh, along the North Shoreline. We'll go to Redfish. Uh, Albert Garrison says Redfish have been proved lately uh, with better tides. He's used his power pole to anchor on points on the North Shoreline of West Bay around Twin Islands and in the Blue Hole. Then guy Brett Tweedy's been finding limits while soaking chunks of mullet on the mud flats adjacent to the channel. Points and bios jumping around Oyster Lake, Crab Lake, Matt Island have good, been good. Boggy Lake just south of the ICW near East Matagorda Bay has been good. And Lake Austin, the muddy shorelines of Brown Cedar Flats have paid off. Then those reefs in Bastrop Bay and Chocolate Bay near Freeport have uh, been good. And as always, I say it every week, bull redfish uh, are showing at the Freeport, Surfside, Matagorda, Port O'Connor, Port Aransas Jetty all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's been really, really, really good. You can really count on that pattern. We'll go offshore, uh, kingfish in Matagorda. Got uh, Michael Quebec and said kingfish are everywhere around structure or just trolling. Just today he went out in his bay boat and caught uh, kingfish with inside of the, uh, of the beach as well as red snapper. The same holds true in Freeport. Captain Mike Siegel, real uh, thrill charters. Many have 
fish have been hitting sardines, and he's he's catching those fish uh, with inside of the beach. Our, our uh, Gulf water temperatures 87 to 88 degrees, and those kingfish come within uh, uh, you know side of the beach, and some of them are there at the jetty. And uh, our, our our shrimp boat, our our shrimp season opens July the 15th, and a lot of those kings will be behind those shrimp boats later in the month, so you can look forward to that. And as always, those red snapper are everywhere from Freeport to Port Aransas. Drop a squid down at 40 to 80 foot of water, and you're probably going to get bit. And the seagull says his best snapper this week has been about 17 pounds. Most of the fish have been coming uh, in about the 32 to 40 mile uh, range offshore. All right, Bing, so, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Middle Coast hotspots. Bink says inshore trout are good in Rockport on top waters around Mud Island. On the incoming tide, soft plastics have worked better later in the morning in chest deep water. And then offshore, kingfish are good on sardines within sight of the beach out of Freeport. Look for more kings behind the shrimp boat later this month as the Gulf shrimp season opens up. Well, y'all, there you have it. Six regions and six guides around the state of Texas. We hope you had a great 4th of July weekend or day, and we hope that your weekend is just as good, right, guys? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully, Bye. I'll keep all my fingers. And I'm a year older. Oh, <laughs> you're so old stuff now, up. Bree. Oh, I'm my so gosh. I'm 28. 28-year-old <laughs> <laughs> mama. I've got mama. underwear that old. Yeah, you ever had right. a trader in for a new one? It's all right, Never, guys. never, We'll see you guys never. next week. Have Bye, a good guys. weekend. Bye.